Oh, my sweet baby squid, you thought that you had spent all the money you'd ever need to spend on your motorcycle already. You thought that a $3,000 motorcycle and $1,000 worth of gear and insurance and registration costs and new tires and maintenance and, geez, that's a lot of things to spend on money with a motorcycle. Well, here's one more thing, or I guess seven more things that you can run out and spend some more money on. That's right, we're talking beginner accessories. Or if you're completely bled dry by your motorcycle already, just run out and get a new credit card with a 23% interest rate and max that sucker out. Just kidding, please do not go get a credit card just to fund your motorcycle-related purchasing addiction. Yes, bikes are fun, but it's not worth dipping to the old 401k to get yourself some rim tape and new exhaust. Anyways, if you're a beginner and you've started putting down miles on the saddle, you've probably started to notice some problems with your setup. Either the fit isn't 100% or you have some bits starting to rattle loose or just some bits and bobs that are annoying. Well, today we're going to give you seven easy and for the most part cheap mods or accessories you can add to your riding kit to make your life better. That's right, if you thought your life was pretty good, prepare to be educated. It turns out that it was actually garbage and these are the only things that can bring you joy. They will save you from the darkest pits of despair and solve your erectile dysfunction all at once. And no, we're not talking about your junk, it's your wheelies. You gotta get up that wheelie game, my dude. Two inch baby wheelies are neither dank nor nooners. You gotta figure that out. One thing you should have with your bike regardless of whether or not you're a beginner is motorcycle insurance. You don't wanna be that guy who's riding around with no coverage and drop your bike at an intersection and have to live with the shame of cracked and busted fairings or pay to fix it yourself. You're in luck. Progressive, our newest partner, has just what you're looking for. We've had all the shop bikes insured through Progressive Moto since before we started working with them because they've got the best coverage for bikes out there. You can get gear and aftermarket parts coverage, roadside assistance, and basic policies starting as low as 79 bucks a year. Click the link down below and get a quote to see how much money you can save, money that you can spend on your bike because let's face it, you're never going to stop tinkering with your motorcycle. It's not physically possible. Thanks again to Progressive Moto for sponsoring today's video. They're our brand new partner for our show and we're very, very excited to have them on board. So click them down below, see if you can get a free quote for your motorcycle. Speaking of which, let's get into these accessories. Number one, a pin lock visor. Have you ever been riding on a cold morning with your visor closed and realized that it steams up faster than a shower scene in a romantic comedy? Well, that's because you're hot, just not in the way you might think. Your body heat combined with warm breath on a cold visor is the perfect storm for fog. And if your visor fogs up, you can't see where you're going and the only light you'll be seeing is a glow of the pearly gates. Man, this script has a different kind of energy to it, huh? Who the hell writes this stuff? Anyway, a pinlock shield is a little piece of plastic with a rubber gasket that fits on the inside of your face shield and it traps a pocket of air which prevents your helmet from fogging up because science. A lot of upmarket helmets have them in the box, so if you're spending $300 or more, you can expect to have either the pinlock in the box or the mounting studs already in your face shield. They can be a bit of a pain to install, but once you have it on there, the only way your helmet will fog up is if you start vaping in your lid. If your helmet doesn't come with a pinlock or the mounting hardware, you can buy those kits to install them, but you have to be super duper careful when installing it since you will have to drill holes in your face shield. I would get a spare shield just in case. You can pick up a lens kit for like $25 bucks or more depending on your brand of helmet, but given how well they work, it's money well spent. Number two, a battery tender and a USB charging port. Look, you're not going to ride your motorcycle every day, even if you told your wife or girlfriend or husband or boyfriend or body pillow that when you were begging for permission to get your bike. I'm sorry to say, but there's going to be times when you just don't want to get on the bike, and sometimes those days turn into weeks. And when you decide it's time to wake your iron steed, you don't want to be greeted by the sound of a dying battery. A battery tender is a device that hooks up to your battery and keeps it topped off or can recharge if you accidentally left your lights on for too long. There's a million to choose from, but anyone that claims to have an advanced trickle technology is what you want. Any that claim they trickle down should be smited back to the 1970s economic theory dustbin. It actually means that it lets the battery charge up to 100, then lose a little bit of charge before kicking it back on again, which is better for the long-term health of the battery. Chargers like that usually cost around 50 or 70 bucks, but trust me, it is money well spent. An added benefit is that you can use the 12 volt lead to run USB chargers for your phone and you won't have to worry about it dying or leaving you stranded in the middle of nowhere with only a volleyball for companionship against ever encroaching madness on a desert island. I'm not sure how you managed to get yourself stranded on a desert island on a motorcycle, but you never know. Number three, 
a brake lock. Motorcycles are 260% more likely to be stolen than cars, experts say. Those experts are me, I made that number up, but motorcycles are very stealable, and before we dive too far into this one, no brake lock is ever going to stop two dudes in a van from running off with your bike. The only way to stop that is to get a Harley. Nobody's going to want to risk a hernia for that lump of American iron. Now, onto locks. You can get the kind of locks that keeps your front brake lever held in, and those are trash. Don't get one of those. They're a pain in the butt, and they're easier to bypass. Disc locks are where it's at, and it's what you want. You can get a big-ass U-lock, which is cheaper since it doesn't need to be motorcycle specific, which means that pretty much any hardware store lock will work. You can get a motorcycle specific disc lock, which often comes with alarms built in, but since they're designed for motorcycles, they're often more expensive. For the most part, these locks are functionally unbreakable. You can get through them, sure, but it'll take too long and thieves are lazy. If you want the less elegant solution, you can get yourself a massive heavy duty chain, which you can run through your wheel or your frame and then chain it to something heavy like a car, a rock, or your mother. Pick the one that makes the most sense for your situation and your bike. Now let's face it, a Ninja 400 isn't a big target stateside versus a brand spanking new leader bike, so locking it up like Fort Knox is just going to make it more inconvenient for you to ride your own bike. Number four, smartphone compatible gloves. This is a short one because it's still self-explanatory, but you're here for your 10 minute daily dose of Papa Yam in your face, so let's break down why being able to use your phone without taking your gloves off is a good thing. Have you ever been stuck at a long light trying to get your phone to skip a track or a waypoint on your route only have to refuse to listen to you like an obstinate child in the cereal aisle? Well, if you had smartphone compatible glove, it's almost like not wearing a glove in the first place. It's a feature that's such a no-brainer that you'd expect it to be on basically every street glove, but you'd be surprised how many few gloves actually have it. If you have a glove that doesn't have a touchscreen finger, you can actually buy little sticky pads that you can put on your fingers of your gloves that'll do the same thing. They're not permanent fixtures on your gloves, which is a bummer, but don't worry, you'll wear through your gloves faster than you think. You only need to have touchscreen fingers on your index finger and thumb, so don't let some glove upcharge you $50 because every fingertip is touchscreen compatible. If you want some gloves right off the dome that are touchscreen compatible, you've got the Revit Fly 3, Reacts Casters, and the A-Stars SMX1 Air V2s. You're welcome. Number five, a toolkit. This is one that every bike needs, but it's one thing to have the toolkit and another thing to know how to use it. You should assemble your tool roll yourself with tools from reputable brands because they're going to live a tough life in your saddle bag, tail storage, or backpack. Some things that you should have in there are a ratchet with an 8, 10, and 12 mil sockets, 4, 6, and 8 mil allens, a tire patch kit, preload tool for your bike, a pen gauge, some bike specific wrenches, and some other bits and bobs. These are typically weird sizes like 15s or 17s for the odd bolt, a bunch of zip ties, and a bunch of different sizes and lengths, and a screwdriver with some bits, and lastly, a flashlight. If you need anything more specific than that, it's safe to say that you're not going to be riding the bike home. Some things you should know how to do on the road with that toolkit is to fix or replace your throttle cables or your clutch cables, repair a punctured tire, swap broken levers, or make preload adjustments and adjust your chain slack. If you can do those few things, there's pretty much nothing you can't fix out on the road unless you have a nasty spill and you need to get the bike carted away. If you're riding off-road, you might need to carry tubes and tire spoons with you. If you're riding long distance, you should probably carry a little extra gas. And if you're on a BMW GS, you should probably have a cup holder so your venti soy latte doesn't obscure your GPS. Number six, upgraded lights. I'm not just talking about fancy blinkers either. Sometimes when you buy an older bike as your first, you'll get a set of half-dead halogen bulbs, which can barely show you the road right in front of you, or let alone a pothole 100 feet out down the street. There's lots of ways to go, but the cheapest and most effective way to go is getting LED replacements. They're less of a draw on your motorcycle's electrical system, produce more light, and last something like a million billion years before you need to actually replace them. Some kits require you to put a resistor or capacitor in line to boost voltage to the light if you're going with something crazy high powered, in which case you need to get clever about where you're going to be putting it in, but again, just swapping LEDs is so much easier. If you're going from halogen blinkers to LED ones, you'll need to get a flasher relay so you can change the flash rate of the new bulbs. Since the LEDs are so much lower resistance, they oftentimes blink faster or sometimes not at all if you use the stock relay. When they blink really fast, we call this hyperflash. Sometimes people claim that they like the flash rate faster, but that's BS, they're just too lazy to swap the relay. And if it's not, some relays out there allow you to tune the flash rate to your heart's content. Lastly, brake lights. Getting LED brake lights mean that you'll be throwing a lot more light behind you when you're slowing down. You can also get yourself lights that blink when you hit the brake. If you do decide to get an integrated tail light, make sure that the blinkers are amber and not red. That can be confusing to cars behind you. 
Number seven, dashboard accessories or a new dashboard. Keeping with our theme of modernizing older motorcycles, a lot of beginner bikes come from the factory without things like RPM counters or gear position indicators or temperature readouts and stuff like that. Now, for the most parts, all those little system readouts are kind of pointless. If your bike is 200 degrees or 201 degrees, it's not gonna make a difference, but it's nice knowing what RPM you're at or what gear you're in. You can get little displays that are designed to do that, not for a whole lot of money, and for the most part, they're not that hard to install. You'll likely have to take a bunch of panels off your bike, but it is worth it. If you don't have a gear position indicator, slapping one of these on there is nice so you don't keep digging for six gear on the highway when you're already completely topped out. If you're on a bike with a crazy simple dash, they make companion dashboards or whole dash replacement kits, which aren't that expensive and basically do everything. You'll get temperature, RPM, speed, gear position, and in some cases, you'll even get GPS connectivity. They can be a pain to program, but when you get them set up, they'll completely change the look and feel of your cockpit. Insert ball shaver joke here. Fact, ornithologists often use Cheetos to study behaviors in crows. Along with being easy to spot, they're also one of the bird's favorite snacks. Goodbye. Oh, hey, you're still here. I can't believe you made it to the end of the video. Not many people do. Just for you, I have a little treat. Hit this link over here, check out the next video on the Yemenub catalog. What's gonna happen in it? I don't really know. Maybe there's a boost in it, maybe there's some cool wheelies, maybe there's some fun memes. Probably, who can say?